Okay, in this video we're going to look at split brain research and that is exactly um, what the name suggests. It's when a brain has been split down the middle and effectively the two hemispheres can no longer communicate with each other. So for this video it's very important to remember that the brain is contralateral. So the left hemisphere controls the right side of the body and the right hemisphere controls the left side of the body. So what is a split brain, first of all? So if we think about um, the two hemispheres, they are connected through a series of um, big, strong connections called the corpus callosum. And you can imagine it as if it's like a bunch of cables that just allow the two hemispheres to talk to each other. Um, if we look at it side on, it's this uh, green patch in the diagram here. Um, so very strong connections that allow information to be passed backwards and forwards between the hemispheres. Now, in some cases of very, very severe epilepsy, where patients haven't responded to drug treatment, for example, um, split brain operations have been used to um, make their seizures less severe. Um, this is because epilepsy is um, when a part of the brain, the electrical stimulation in part of the brain, um, essentially becomes out of control, which is uh, what can cause the seizure symptoms. Now, in people with very, very severe epilepsy, it might be that that ele over electrical stimulation is transmitted from one part of one hemisphere, maybe one lobe, and it travels across the corpus callosum and um, causes overstimulation in the entirety of the brain. Now, when patients haven't responded to drug treatment, um, severing the corpus callosum means that um, that electrical stimulation, that overstimulation, then can't pass through to the other hemisphere. And it is actually a very, very successful treatment for epilepsy. Obviously, it's a, a last resort method. And realistically, in recent times, it's actually very rarely used now. So it was quite an old technique. But it has um, given psychologists the opportunity to study what happens when somebody's brain has been split and the two hemispheres can't speak to each other. Chiefly, this is interesting because it allows us to test the idea of hemispheric lateralization. So in the last video, we talked about how in most spe people, speech is lateralized to the left hemisphere and things like spatial um, spatial awareness is in the right hemisphere. Now, if those two hemispheres can't talk to each other, that gives us the opportunity to test whether this idea is actually the case. And psychologists have used a setup which is very, very similar to this one. So if I just talk you through this, first of all. So this patient will, imagine he is a split brain patient and he is sitting in front of a table with, as you can see, a series of objects on there, and there is a board in front of him. Now, that board means he cannot see those objects. He's been asked to focus on that dot in the middle of the board, which means as he's looking directly ahead of him, the word key, which is in his left visual field, is being um, processed by his right hemisphere, and the word ring, which is in his right visual field, is being processed by his left hemisphere. Now in this task, he's been asked to pick up an object from the table, or he's been given an object from the table, um, as you can see it's a key, and he's been asked to, just through feel only, because if, if someone puts a key in your hand you can generally tell it's a key that you're holding, he's been asked to say, to state, what is it that's in your hand, and the answer that he's given there is ring, which is obviously an incorrect answer. So if we look at what's actually happening in this situation, so the key is being processed or it's being, the information is being um, processed by his left hand. So that information, because the brain is contralateral, is being processed by his right hemisphere. So his right hemisphere is aware that he is holding a key in his left hand. Now in a normal healthy patient, that information would be passed across the corpus callosum to the left hemisphere because the left hemisphere is the hemisphere which controls speech. However, in his case, the corpus callosum has been cut and that information is effectively stuck in his right hemisphere, which means although the right side of his brain knows he's holding a key, he can't articulate that information because he is, um, his speech is within the left hemisphere. Now what his left hemisphere is aware of is that it can see the word ring because that information is being presented to his right visual field and is therefore being processed by his left hemisphere. So in order to give an answer to that question, 
he uses the information that he has to hand or his left hemisphere uses the information that has, he has to hand and that's the answer ring which would suggest that speech in his case anyway is localized in the left hemisphere now psychologists have used various setups of this design so there are various different ways you can use it um, it's worth going over this a couple of times to really make sure you understand why he's giving the answer ring and exactly what the process is that's going on within these two hemispheres here. So when we're thinking about split brain um, research, it is worth noting that speech is not always localised in the left hemisphere. So I said it was true of most people, but it is definitely not true of everybody. Also, as I said, this procedure is rarely carried out now. So when we're looking at research, we're looking at sample sizes that are very, very small, maybe only two or three people. And equally, we have to remember that these people have undergone a medical operation for um, a physical disorder, which meant their brain was probably not what we would um, talk, term an average brain to start with. So it could be that the way that they're responding to these tests is to do with that confounding variable rather than due to the fact that um, their corpus callosum has been split. So before you come into the lesson, you can have a look at the pre-reading, which will take you in a bit more detail about um, the setup of split brain research. But make sure that you can explain what contralateral means. We've come across that a couple of times now. Um, explain how split brain can impact behaviour. So you can think about that study that we've just um, looked at. How is that going to change somebody's behaviour? And lastly, explain why split brain research may not be reliable.